Arrowlake is Intel's revolutionary new processor for mainstream desktop. Featuring new P cores and E cores, disaggregated tile based 3D Foveros packaging, an integrated NPU for AI acceleration, a next generation Uncore, DLVR power rails, and so much more. In this video series, I have a look at Arrowlake performance tuning and overclocking opportunities. I have a look at the compute, memory subsystem, and data fabric. In this video, we have a closer look at the Arrow Lake Ring. The Ring fabric provides the data fabric interface between the various compute IP blocks in the compute tile, the last level cache, and the SOC compute D2D interface. The clocking of the Ring is very similar to how it was on previous Intel processors. There's a reference clock that gets multiplied by a ring ratio. The 100 MHz reference clock frequency is generated internally by the CPU PLL. This clock affects all IP blocks in the compute tile, including the P cores, E cores, and ring. This PLL can be linked to the SLC PLL when you run it in synchronous mode, or work independently if you run a synchronous mode. You can configure the CPU BCLK frequency between 40 and 1000 MHz. In the ASUS ROG BIOS, you can configure the CPU BCLK frequency in the AI tweaker menu by first setting the AI overclock tuner to anything else than auto. You can then switch between a synchronous and synchronous mode by adjusting the BCLK mode option. The reference clock is multiplied by the ring ratio to get the ultimate ring frequency. And the ring frequency can be totally independent from the P cores and the E cores. In the ASUS ROG BIOS, you can configure the minimum and maximum ring ratio in the AI Tweaker main menu. It's important to note that the ring frequency cannot exceed the maximum P core or E core frequency. So even if the maximum ring ratio is 39x, if all P cores and E cores are limited to 38x, then the ring will also be limited to 38x. The voltage regulation of the ring is substantially different on Arrow Lake compared to how it was on Raptor Lake. And that's because of the introduction of the DLVR. The DLVR basically allows for lower operating voltages, but it still relies on a dynamic external motherboard voltage regulator as its voltage source. The ring has its own VF curve, which is defined by up to nine VF points. The first eight VF points are factory fused, and the last point is mapped to the so-called OC ratio. Here's the ring VF curve for my specific Core Ultra 9285K. The voltage is 0.826 volt between 8x and 34x, then increases to 1.054 volt for VF point 6 at 3.8 gigahertz and 1.106 volt for VF point 7 at 3.9 gigahertz. 3.9 GHz is the default maximum frequency for the ring. However, there's an eighth factory fused VF point at 1.159 volt for 4 GHz too. This point gets unlocked when you also program an OC ratio. Unfortunately, the ring VF points are not available in the ASUS ROG BIOS. However, you can access them using the Shamino work tool. Advanced voltage offset is available for the ring. There are nine available VF points, each of which are fixed to a specific ratio. The final VF point is mapped to the OC ratio, which in theory can be configured independently. However, in the ASUS BIOS, it will be set to the maximum ring ratio configured in the BIOS. You can set a voltage offset for each of these VF points. The final OC ratio's base voltage will be the manual set adaptive voltage. So just to clarify, in theory, you can define three ratios for the ring, the OC ratio for VF.9, the minimum ring ratio and the maximum ring ratio. The OC ratio will ultimately define the shape of the ring VF curve, whereas the minimum and maximum ring ratio determine the allowable clock range for the ring. Unfortunately, the ring VF points are not available in the ASUS ROG BIOS, However, you can access them using the Shimino work tool. To safeguard the processor, Intel has imposed strict voltage limits for the ring. Basically, these limits prevent the ring from requesting higher voltages to the processor 
power control unit. By default, the voltage limitation for the ring is 1.356 volt, but this can be increased to 1.45 volt under ambient conditions. When the temperature is below 10 degrees Celsius, you can further increase the voltage limit or disable the limit altogether. In the ASUS ROG BIOS, you can configure the ring DLVR voltage limit via the AI Tweaker Max Voltage Limits submenu. The external VCCIA motherboard VR, MBVR, provides the input voltage for the individual P cores, E core clusters, ring, last level cache, and the E core L2 cache. Each P core, E core cluster, and ring has an individual digital linear voltage regulator, or DLVR, between the VCCIA rail and the IP blocks. That means each of the blocks can operate at its own voltage. VCCR is the DLVR powering the ring and the last level cache. The DLVRs can also be bypassed. In that case, the IP blocks are running in so-called power gate mode or PG mode. In PG mode, the VCCIA voltage rail directly powers the IP blocks and they all share the same voltage. That's similar to how previous generation desktop architectures worked. The default mode of operation is DLVR mode, so let's explore that first. Based on the ring VF curve, the ring requests an operating voltage using the SVIT protocol from the CPU power control unit or PCU. The PCU in turn configures the VCCIA voltage rail and the VCCR DLVR. There's two ways to configure the ring voltage, in adaptive mode or override mode. Adaptive mode is the standard mode of operation, which relies on the factory fused voltage frequency curves that we discussed before. Override mode specifies a single static voltage across all ratios. It is mainly used for extreme overclocking where stability at high frequencies is the only consideration. We can configure override and adaptive modes directly in the PCU by specifying a target voltage and a voltage offset for each mode. In adaptive mode, the target voltage is mapped to the ring's OC ratio. This also matches the ring VF.9. You can configure the adaptive voltage and the OC ratio to any value. However, multiple rules enforce what ratio and voltage is actually set. Rule number one, the voltage set for a given VF point N must be higher than or equal to the voltage set for VF point N minus one. In the case of the ring, it means that the voltage for the OC ratio must be higher than or equal to the voltage for VF.8. This can be a little bit strange because you can program the OC ratio to any value, including lower than 40x. For example, let's say you set the maximum ring ratio to 28x and the adaptive voltage to one volt. In that case, VF.9 will be programmed to 28x at one volt. However, the actual frequency will be 2.8 gigahertz with 1.159 volt, as that's the voltage for VF.8. Rule number two, for ratios between the OC ratio and the next highest factory fused VF point, the voltage is interpolated between the set adaptive voltage and the factory fused voltage. Let's say we configure the ring VF OC point to 45X and 1.35 volt. The target voltage for ring ratios between 40x and 45x is now interpolated between the factory fused voltage for 40x and the set adaptive voltage for 45x. One last thing about adaptive mode. The adaptive offset is applied across the entire curve. So if we set a plus 100 millivolt adaptive offset, the operating voltage for all frequencies between 8x and the OC ratio will be increased by 100 millivolt. In the ASUS ROG BIOS, you can configure the ring DLVR voltage in the AI Tweaker menu. You can configure it in adaptive, manual, and offset mode. In power gate mode, all the DLVRs tied to the VCCIA voltage rail are powered directly from the VCCIA voltage rail. That includes the P cores, the E cores and their cache, the ring, and the last level cache. In PG mode, we basically operate the VCCIA voltage rail as it was on previous generation Raptor Lake. On Arrow Lake, it works 
but it's a little bit complex. To make a long story short, when the P cores, E cores, and ring request their voltage to the CPU PCU, they account for a ton of other compensations, including voltage droop, DLVR efficiency, AVX GAR bands, thermal velocity boost voltage optimizations, and so on. The result is that the actual voltage provided from the VCCIA voltage rail to the DLVRs is relatively high. For example, here are the voltages with the CPU at stock voltage and stock frequencies, running a light all-core workload. We can interpret this as follows. The P-Core, E-Core, and Ring request a voltage to the PCU to ensure it's running 1.15 volt, 1.05 volt, and 1.1 volt, respectively. The PCU then adds compensation for the low lines, CEP, TVB, AVX, ACLL, DLVR efficiency losses, and so on. At the very end of the calculation, the PCU determines the VCCIA voltage rail should provide 1.43 volt input voltage to the DLVRs. If we were to switch to power gate mode, but maintain the same mechanism for calculating the required voltage, then the VCCIA voltage rail would effectively provide 1.43 volt to the P-cores, E-cores, and ring. That's obviously way too high for the target frequency and would quickly result in an overheating system. But this would be how the voltage was configured on previous generation Raptor Lake processors. Fortunately, there's a second way to approach power gate mode. Ignore all the SVID stuff and program the VCCIA voltage regulator directly over PM bus. And basically, we can control directly what is the voltage output of the VCCIA voltage rail. This approach is a very traditional way of overclocking, whereby you set a fixed output voltage and then use an appropriate VRM load line setting to reduce the operating voltage in higher load scenarios. Let's have a look at an example and compare power gate and DLVR in Cinebench R23. If we set 1.35 volt with LLC equals six, then the effective voltage under load is 1.26 volt. That's about 150 millivolt higher than with DLVR. Despite the higher voltage though, the temperature is only 7C higher than what we get when we run DLVR. If we set 1.3 volt with load line 4, then the effective voltage under load is 1.15 volt, which is very similar to what we get with DLVR. Despite the almost identical voltage, the temperature is 7 degrees Celsius lower than with DLVR. The bottom line on DLVR versus PG mode is that DLVR seems to provide us with better temperatures and power consumption in low load scenarios, whereas power gate mode appears to provide us better temperatures and power consumption in high load scenarios. And that's primarily due to the power loss associated with a linear voltage regulator. Basically, the power loss translates into heat and then heat eats into our thermal budget. So we have less overclocking headroom and we need more cooling power. How much cooling power are we talking about exactly? Well, the power loss across a linear voltage regulator equals the decrease in voltage across the DLVR multiplied by the total load. In our example, with a voltage drop of 305 millivolt and a 160 amp load, the power loss is about 50 watts, and nearly all of that power loss will convert into heat. For higher load scenarios, it seems that power gate mode offers us better overclocking headroom, and that's primarily because the operating temperature is lower. But we cannot rely on the ISVID calculations of the PCU because they're too conservative, which means that the voltages are too high. So if you're going to be using power gate mode, I suggest you skip all of the ISVID stuff and program the VCCIA voltage rail directly over PM bus. Do note that you have to set an appropriate VRM load line to make sure that the voltage drops in high load scenarios. In the ASUS ROG BIOS, you can switch between DLVR and power gate mode for the VCCIA voltage rail in the AI tweaker menu by configuring the CPU DLVR mode menu item.
you can set the VCC IA voltage rail in the AI tweaker menu by configuring the actual VRM core input voltage in manual mode. The overclocking potential of the ring is very limited. At default voltage, you can increase a couple of bins at best on the Core Ultra 9285K to maybe 4.2 GHz. The overclocking range is a little bit better on the Core Ultra 5 245K due to the missing middle P cores. That's the bad news. The good news is that the ring frequency has barely any impact on the performance. Changing from 4 GHz to 2 GHz only decreases the Cinebench R23 multi-thread performance by less than 1.5%. So the lack of overclocking headroom doesn't impact the maximum performance potential. There is a significant undervolting potential, however. On my CPU, I could run the ring at 3.9 GHz with 950 mV, which is 150 mV lower than the factory-fused VF curve. Configuring the undervolt is a little bit tricky due to how the VF point configuration works. Therefore, I suggest you simply set a maximum ring ratio and an override voltage in the BIOS.